last 25 maybe years, people haven't noticed a great change. I, I, you know, I'm one of those people who move in small increments. I always have. Um, so if, if my style has changed in, in any way uh, between, say, 1968 when I arrived here, mm -hmm. when I arrived here, I actually was painting more abstractly painting more abstractly because I wasn't really sure how to handle the minimalism and yeah. the empirical information I was getting from the plains out there west, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the way in which I sort of allowed myself to become involved in that was to paint a little bit more abstractly. Yeah. And um, so that began to change for me as I became more and more comfortable with what I was seeing out there mm -hmm. and wanting more and more well, I understood that it was important. And it was important to me in a, in a number of different ways, but, but in part, it was not the cliche of landscape painting out there. It was that sort of thing people didn't pay attention to. Landscape painting was the ocean, it was the woodlands, yeah. it was the valleys, it was all of those things. Uh, yeah, that subject to it, yeah. those trees, that nature yeah, subject. Yeah, picturesque. Yeah. Picturesque, picturesque, yes. You know? And the plains were, were, I mean, I would hear more and more people say to me who would come here and say, well, we were driving from Denver and, oh, God, we just had to get across the damn western Nebraska. It's the flyover state. The flyover state. And, and I thought, well, what's wrong with that? You know, yeah. I mean, it didn't make sense to me. So I began to really pursue that. Uh, and, and the more I pursued it, the more I wanted it to be less abstract. I wanted it to be more about referencing what one would see out there, and, as opposed to sort of completely altering it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let it just be natural. Yeah. What it is. Yeah. So that occurred probably in the first, I would say from 68, yeah, it, well, that would have occurred in about for the first five years that I was yeah. here. So uh, by the time, by the, by the mid-70s, I was beginning to really look at things in a very specific kind. Someone asked me um, two or three years ago, when you go out uh, into the landscape to work, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. And I blurted out, Kansas. Oh, really? Yeah, isn't that bizarre? That was the natural just... Yeah, I'm looking for Kansas. And, and in, in a sense, what I am looking for is a way to go home again. Yeah. You know, they say you can't, but that's my way to try to find my way back home. But it's, it's visual, and, and luckily Nebraska has all of those attributes. I mean, you could, you do. there are certain parts of Nebraska you can set people down in from, you could blindfold them, fly them in, <laughs> and set them in the middle of the field, and they'd go, oh, yeah, this is, this is southeast Kansas, Kansas yeah. right, or southwest Kansas. Or something. That's true, they're very mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. They're very, very similar. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so I'm looking for that emotionally. And I know that when I get that, when, when I feel that sense that I'm seeing myself, and, and I don't know, maybe this is a little bit too dramatic, but when I'm seeing myself in the painting, when I'm feeling that sense of um, some kind of an emotional connection with the painting, I think it has a lot to do with those days of flying with my father, with those days driving. Unconsciously. Yeah. yeah. It's all deeply embedded in me. And occasionally I get it out, and it's and that that you know the painting at the Nelson Atkins, mm -hmm. that is one of those times when it just you just hit lose me. yourself in it. Yeah, just hit me. painted directly from the source for almost 14 years, okay. where I would go out with a French easel and set up the landscape and paint. You you do watercolors out there, I or do, is it? Yeah, that's okay. what I do now. Now, yeah. then you were the yeah. paint, I, really? I, yeah, uh, I painted oils out there for 12 to 14 years, and then finally, in, the, in probably about 83 or 84, I began to realize that what I wanted to do was synthesize what I was seeing out there in uh, a way that I could only synthesize it in a studio. Okay. So what I do now is I go out and make drawings and I make watercolors and I bring yeah. them back to the studio. 
So this is a synthesis of, a, of multiple experiences out there. Okay, multiple, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, and people think that it's a specific place. Mm -hmm, it's just a time. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm happy with them thinking that way. If they feel that way, then I feel like I'm successful. Okay. But this is really a synthesis of probably three yeah, or four different deep. ways. Thanks. It goes so deep. Yeah. It and that, so and the space, that's the other thing, you know, that's one of the, that's certainly a condition that I want to be in those paintings is that deep space, that sense of deep space. I think I would probably play music. Really? Yeah. yeah. Any specific instrument? I play keyboard. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, and that's very satisfying. Yeah. And I would probably write, which is what I do in my journals. Yeah. You know, and, I'm, and I would try to somehow maybe make those two things work, I suppose. Yeah. But it would be something that would allow me to do it on my own, on my own, you know, uh, which is... I think the pleasure of being in the studio is, is that there's a certain kind of, uh, I don't want to say monastic, but there's a certain quality and privacy in the studio that you don't have if you're a With musician. With your profession, yeah, that yeah. comes, yeah. Well, uh, I think it must have been probably the third or fourth time we went out to paint together. Uh, we it was it was probably December, okay. and down there in Kansas in December it's still mild, and so we were out okay. there worked, and I he was set up about maybe 25, 30 feet away from me, and I was set up, in another th we were both looking kind of at the same motif, okay, and it was a cloudy overcast day, and the and the wind came up out of the north, and then the next thing I knew it was snowing, oh really, yeah, and that's not Midwest weather too, yeah. Yeah, unpredictable. Stuff. And I kept looking over at Sudlow, and he had he wasn't phased. He wasn't cleaning up, you know. And I'd already started cleaning up, <laughs> and he didn't even notice that I was cleaning up. And finally, I and and finally, it was snowing hard enough that I I just couldn't believe that he was still working. And he suddenly he kind of looked over at me and he said, "What are you doing? Why are you cleaning up? This is the best part of it." You know, he was so involved and excited about what was going on visually in front of him. That I think that was a lesson that I learned that I never forgot. You know, just in that moment. Yeah, to, be, to absolutely be in that moment, right? Yeah. You know, intellectually, emotionally, just giving yourself involved over the entire, in yeah. Well, my advice would be just work. I, I think just you work. have to work, yes. And you have to be committed to the work. You have to be, and you have to be It'll willing. It'll come through that. Yeah. That's right. And you have to work all the time. Uh, I know a lot of young students who find it very, very difficult to spend three to six hours in the studio. Really? And, um, and I also know a few who have, and they've done very well out in the world as painters and that sort of thing. But you have to work, and you have to see the work develop over it's such I, I just hope people will remember the work. I hope it, I hope it will continue to live out there. They will. And it's in some pretty nice institutions now, and mm -hmm. that's the way you help it to live. And and, um, and, and it's in some in nice private collections, and you hope yeah. that because of that, it will it will somehow live uh, out there beyond. Uh, this. Mm -hmm.